And that brings us to tonight's guest, Neil Norman. He's put out two albums now. Even though he's only 25 years old, he's a real up-and-coming composer from Hollywood. Here we have Not of This Earth, featuring many of his own arrangements and with Les Baxter. And my favorite, the greatest science fiction hits, which features renditions of all the currently popular films, Star Wars, Superman, Star Trek, it even has the black hole, which hasn't even been released yet. So this is one that you really have to have. Neil, welcome to Creature Features. Before we get into the interview, though, I want to see if the fans can identify this piece of music from greatest science fiction hits. Well, it's the only record that you'll find that piece of music on. The Outer Limits, the popular science fiction series from the early 60s. Neil, how do you get, how do you get permission to reproduce all of this wonderful classic music mm -hmm. from television? Well, these composers are delighted when I record them because they get money for it. Every time one of those records sells, they get so much. I see, so they're in on the action too. Oh, absolutely. While they sleep, they're making money. How, uh, what are some of the problems you face when you go to arrange another composer's music, you being a composer yourself? Mm -hmm. Well, on this project, I tried to retain the originality for a genuine album, yet give it a little contemporary feel, like with synthesizers and big orchestra. Wherever it was needed, we'd give it a big orchestra, and whenever we wanted a really cosmic feel, we'd go for the synthesized treatment. I see. Now, you told me earlier that you're making a lot of personal appearances now with your fantasy and science fiction music, right. Disneyland, mm -hmm. county fairs, and places like that. How large a group uh, travels with you? Well, we usually take it wherever the budget can afford, anywhere from uh, six men to like 15. I see. Uh, now, when you go out to, to record a, uh, a soundtrack album or a, a theme song, are there any problems in terms of the uh, original composer not wanting to cooperate. Mm -hmm. Have you ever encountered that? Well, actually, there's a law that says that once a record has been released, anyone can also record the song. And like I said before, they almost never object because they're going to derive money from it themselves. I see. What are some of the devices you used in the Not of This World? Um, um, you're referring to my first record? Yes. Uh -huh. uh, that was kind of a rock group uh, with augmented with synthesizers and some orchestra. Mm -hmm. And that included the theme we played at the beginning of the show, which Captain Cosmic has, has used right, for that's, his decoder card segments. Right, that's an original of mine called Not of This Earth, mm -hmm. which is done entirely on synthesizers. Now, Bernard Herrmann has developed a, a reputation for his fantasy music, especially in the Harryhausen and Hitchcock films. Mm -hmm. Is he a personal favorite of yours? Absolutely. Um, all the way back to like Day the Earth Stood Still, it's a fantastic story. Okay, Neil Norman is not going to leave because I have a zillion questions about film music, soundtracks that I know are, you would like to ask him too. So, Neil is going to stay with us. And a little bit later in the evening after we've talked to Neil, Christopher Lee will be here to tell us about 1941. And don't forget the 3D Star Trek poster. The music you're hearing is from The Outer Limits, which is part of Neil Norman's greatest science fiction hits. Listen to this lineup of themes. Moonraker, Alien, Battlestar Galactica, Star Trek, Close Encounters, Superman, Star Wars, Space 1999, The Day the Earth Stood Still, Phantom Planet, Godzilla, even The Black Hole, which hasn't even come out in the theaters yet. Neil, what is your background in music? Where did you uh, start a as a composer? Where did you get your training? Well, I probably started my training watching the TV at an early age, all the science fiction films. Uh, I've probably seen every one that's ever come on television or theaters, and it had a profound influence on me as a youngster, so I just never missed one. What were some of your favorite fantasy and science fiction films? Um, my favorites are Forbidden Planet, 2001, Planet of the Apes, uh, Day the Earth Stood Still, The Thing, all the best ones. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, you're planning a sequel to this now where you're going to catch some of the titles that you couldn't get into the first album. Right, we're planning on doing Twilight Zone and Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea and uh, the new uh, theme from Star Trek, which isn't available yet. Oh, it's different from the TV right. This The TV theme is included in mm -hmm. the film, I found out, but there'll be a new one also um, composed by Jerry Goldsmith. Mm -hmm. We've played the Star Trek theme. We're going to play it. Uh, we played it at the beginning of the show. We'll probably play it again from, right. from your album. Great. Right. 
Uh, who else is up and coming besides yourself in the uh, film composing world? Well, Jerry Goldsmith is certainly making uh, a lot of progress. He's scored three or four very important films this year. And uh, I think there's a new breed of composers. There's kind of a dichotomy between people with just rock groups that go in and do a low budget score versus someone like Jerry who does a big budget orchestra treatment. And a John Williams too. Right, right, of course. I suppose you have ambitions of seeing yourself one day composing uh, for Superman number four or something, right? Right, that would be perfect. That would be great. What future projects do you have planned right now besides the sequel to Greatest Science Fiction Hits? Um, well, after that, I'll probably do a mainstream rock album, which I'm also interested in, but I intend to continue in the science fiction field because that's really my forte. Mm -hmm. Uh, you've worked with Les Baxter, mm -hmm. who has composed a lot of fantasy and science fiction movie uh, music. Mm -hmm. uh, what's it like working with a professional like him? Well, I'm really lucky to be under his influence. He's done classics like House of Usher, Pit and the Pendulum, a lot of the classic AIP films. And I couldn't have done it without him. He's a genius. In other words, he could be doing exactly what Jerry Goldsmith is doing, but he prefers to do a high volume of stuff because he loves to work. Mm -hmm. So he does like ten movies for every one that uh, Jerry Goldsmith does. I see. In other words, he uh, takes many, many assignments. Right. He really works Would hard. you describe him as a kind of a music hack in that respect? Well, he just really enjoys it and he's a total expert and he does it very quickly. So they love him because mm -hmm. he saves a lot of money for them. Yeah, uh, some of the fans might recall the uh, Hercules uh, Muscle Men films that were mm -hmm. produced in the 60s. Les did a lot of that music. Right. And uh, a lot Very of it's prolific. on albums, too. Mm -hmm. It's amazing what you can find on, on albums if you go into the record stores and take a look through the soundtrack department. All mm -hmm. kinds of films, right. uh, some that you wouldn't believe they would put on soundtracks, but they do. Uh, one last question, Neil. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give for would-be composers out there, our fans who are really turned on to your music? Mm -hmm. Well, the best thing is to watch as many movies as you can and uh, listen to as many records as you can. And, take up a musical instrument like the piano or get into synthesizers. Today there's millions of things to get into that's really inspiring. It's not cut and dried like it used to be. There's lots of exciting ways to get into it. Is that the black hole behind us? Mm -hmm. Would you turn the music up, please? OK, take it down. Just wanted you fans to hear a little sampling from the black hole, the new Walt Disney film that will be opening in about two weeks or a week and a half? About, about a two week, weeks from now, week yeah. Right. In fact, Joseph Bottoms was here last week and we had a little chat about Walt Disney movies and what mm -hmm. it was like to make a, the outer space adventure. Well, Neil, I want to wish you good luck in your soundtracks and your new records and so on. And rest assured that we will be playing those themes here on Creature Features. Okay. <laughs>